821, welcome back. Students are finishing up their first school year held fully in a pandemic. So what did the state's education leaders learn to make learning better when class resumes this fall? Pennsylvania Education Secretary Noe Ortega joins me this morning on the Fox 43 Capitol Beat. Secretary Ortega, uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Matt. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we I think we both can agree that the va overwhelming majority of teachers have done an incredible job uh, this year under just excruciating circumstances and conditions. So with that in mind, how much learning do you still expect students have lost over the course of the past school year? You know, in terms of measuring, we're still trying to do that, Matt. In fact, our push to make sure that uh, we align to the federal recommendations around assessments will help us learn that. Anecdotally, what has been shared with us by students, family, educators, is that the disruption has been pretty significant and disproportion disproportional, right? Folks, uh, students with disabilities, uh, students who are less advantaged are uh, bearing the brunt of the disruption. So how do you make up for that? starting next fall, have you started discussions on uh, where what it's going to look like, whether it's repeating curriculum or uh, just moving on to where the next level is, regardless of how much information actually stuck? Yeah, all those things are being thrown on the table, Matt, with regards to the next steps. In fact, the conversation just started some time ago. What we're trying to do now is provide guidance to our schools so they can direct federal funds to make sure that they address some of the learning loss and accelerate learning as well. So we've got toolkits out for teachers and we continue to fine tune and we'll have to do that in the years to come. Do you expect remote learning to continue next fall? You know, I expect for folks to be prepared with contingency plans on what happens with local transmissions, right? But our entire uh, uh, agency is directed at returning back to some level of normalcy with in-person instruction. I know last fall, the end of summer, the, uh, the and I know that was a previous uh, administration, um, but uh, or education uh, department. But that being said, a lot of school districts were confused because everyone had to kind of go about their own uh, way of kind of organizing. The upcoming fall, do you expect there to be more of a concrete message from the Department of Education in terms of how schools should reopen? You know, we know a lot more now than we did at the beginning of the pandemic. And I think uh, in partnership with the Department of Health and CDC, those guidelines are getting a bit more specific. There is still ambiguity, Matt. You know, in many ways, what you describe is the context of Pennsylvania, right? So folks make decisions at the local level. Local control has in many ways continued to drive the decisions being made at the local level. And I don't anticipate us uh, changing those patterns. I want to talk about two things real quick, student dropout and teacher burnout. Let's start with student dropout and, and what concern level is there that there will be more students dropping out, just simply dropping out of school uh, over the summer? There's a lot of concerns of what's happening to students effectively. Like by that, I mean that the pandemic is uh, impacting uh, individuals' mental health, social well-being, and then commitment and motivation. We don't have the numbers with regards to the dropouts at the moment with regards to Pennsylvania, but we're going to look at it closely. But we're really concerned that people's individual decisions are being disrupted, and we've got to make sure that we figure out how to address those even outside of the school arena. This next one is a bit lengthy, and I apologize, but I want to read part of a text that I received uh, from a local teacher last night. She, uh, the teacher said, quote, many of us gave so much that we are on the brink. I can't put into words how hard teaching has been this year. I worry we will lose some of our best. That's from a teacher in this area. She goes on to describe uh, how they've had to teach classes multiple times a day because of virtual requirements. Uh, many didn't sleep because of prep work and a lack of PPE in general. Uh, what does the department plan to do to help teachers in the future and keep them from leaving? Matt, you know, I want to begin by acknowledging the text that came to you because I think it represents the feeling that many folks have. And I don't think it's limited to educators, but the entire workforce from uh, school psychologists, school social workers to leaders as well. So for that, I want to just acknowledge that and then say that the, that the pandemic has been nothing but a disruption and certainly not a convenience. And for many, it's become taxing. The composition or the pipeline of educators have been a longstanding problem and challenge for us to address. We're directing federal funds to use for educators with regards to professional development, but also to tend to their well-being as well. And I think this is going to be an important puzzle. I anticipate that we're going to have a lot of people question their commitment to the profession, and we need to work as a department to turn that narrative around and begin to provide them the support that they need. So I appreciate you and the person who sent that text for elevating that concern. There was a bill that cleared the Senate Education Committee this week, which unanimously uh, passed that would give parents the option uh, to have their kids repeat a grade. 
What is the department's stance on that? You know, a lot of those decisions happen at the local level, and I think parents need to be put into decision to make the right choice for their students. But I also want to guard against making any decisions without truly knowing what the setback has been uh, and giving a chance for some of the interventions that schools plan to put in place to also take effect. So in many ways, you know, we're talking about something that's at the discretion of parents and students, but we want to make sure that whatever decision they make, they have all the information needed to make the right decision. So again, this bill passed unanimously. Uh, so assuming that it goes to the full Senate, there will be an overwhelming majority in favor of it. So does the department have a stance whether it supports or rejects this bill? You know, again, uh, in terms of the specifics around the bill, I support folks having the opportunity to make the decisions that they're going to make for their kids. Uh, of course, you know, I'm sure that the General Assembly got feedback from parents and communities, so I just want to make sure that I respect the process that's put in place. The department will do what it needs to to make sure that it adapts and provides the resources that are needed for folks to make the right decisions. Education Secretary Nori Ortega, I want to get you out of here on this. Will the Department of Education require a COVID-19 vaccine for students and teachers once more are made available to younger kids this fall? Sure. You know, ultimately, the discretions around the vaccinations rest with DOH, Matt. It's not our intention to require a vaccine, but to leave that to the local discretion. Uh, if I can end by just quickly saying, Matt, I do want to make sure that I don't forget to thank our educators and educator workforce and parents and family for their commendable response during the pandemic. I think it's important takeaway, but you're right. You know, in terms of vaccinations, folks need to make the decision that's best for them, but also for others. So I just want to uh, leave that out there with regards to our stance on vaccinations. Education Secretary Noe Ortega, thank you so much for joining us this morning on the Fox 43 Capital Beat. We'll uh, get in touch in person soon. <laughs> thank you, Matt. All the best in health and safety to you guys as well. Likewise. Thank you.